Good day, my friends. Be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. One question which is always asked, Bishop, why is it so difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said, as he spoke about how difficult it is for a rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because he is rich. So is it difficult for him? Why is it difficult for the rich to be saved, his soul to be saved? In the scripture we will begin to study today, Jesus deals with the subject with a certain detail, partic particularity that he mentioned, certain details which make the difference because he speaks about the rich and he speaks about the poor or the miserable. He puts both scenarios, the rich who lived lavishly and the poor who lived miserably, disgracefully. We will read the scripture now and we will analyze in order to answer the question which we mentioned. Let's understand now. Jesus, Jesus, the Lord Jesus himself, said the following words. He said, there was a certain rich man. There was a certain rich man. It's not a parable. It's not a storytelling, but it's the story of a rich man, extremely wealthy who was clothed in purple and fine linen, clothings which were extremely valuable back then, in those days, when there were no clothing factories, as today we have. To have clothes back then was already difficult, but to have a purple and fine linen clothing, only the, the extremely wealthy, the filthy rich had this right. This, and not only this, but it says, and fared sumptuously every day, which means he, the rich, is placed in the position, in the top position before society. And also he puts the poor in the lowest position in society. When he says, but there was not only the rich man, which means there was not only the rich, but there was a certain beggar, which is the smallest, the least situation a human being can be in the lowest. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. This is extremely important, my friends. The rich man, in spite of all his riches, his glory, he had no name, which means, or rather he did have a name, but Jesus does not mention it, the name of the rich man. But the name of the poor man, he mentions his name, Lazarus. As a matter of fact, Jesus called him Lazarus. He has a name. He had a name. This identifies that this story was not a fairy tale. It was a fact. It took place indeed. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores who was laid at his gate. So the two situations, dramatic of the situation of the poor as well as the lavish life of the rich man, the two conditions of the society back then, and this fact took place in Babylon. The rich men, as well as Lazarus, were both Jews. The complete story indicates 
Well, the history indicates that both were Jews. They were both from Jewish origins. They were both children of Abraham. So Jesus mentions that the poor, the miserable, the beggar, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. He desired. I do not know if he ate, but this is clear. I don't doubt that it, he desired. It's written. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. I know that the poor at the gate of the rich man, he expected that at least the remainder from the rich man's table would also reach him. This is why he was there at the rich man's gate. And his situation was so miserable, so miserable, that the dogs came and licked his sores. Let's continue reading. So it was, look, Jesus said, so it, it was, Jesus guarantees that it took place. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. So Lazarus died and went straight to Abraham's bosom, which means he went to where Abraham was. Abraham, God's friend, obviously, who had been extremely rich, filthy rich. He was extremely rich, billionaire, but he was in heaven. And where he went, so did Lazarus having been taken by the angels, which means the angels took the soul of Lazarus to Abraham's bosom, to where Abraham was. The rich man also died. The rich man also died. You can verify that both parties were living on the opposite sides. One being rich, living lavishly, comfortably, luxuriously, with much luxury, with joy, with happiness. The poor man who lived in hunger, in misery at the gate of the rich man. Two extreme situations. So when they died, the poor man and the rich, they equalized. So now there was no more rich or poor. There was no billionaire nor miserable, extremely miserable. Both all go down to the graveyard and death equalizes all. The rich, the poor, the whites, the blacks, beautiful, ugly, fat, skinny, good and evil, all die. So death equalizes everybody. Jesus is showing this here, that both died. However, the poor man died and was taken, his soul was taken, transported by the angels to where Abraham was, Isaac and Israel. But the rich man also died and Jesus does not say anything about the angels who came to take him to hell. No, neither to hell, neither to he heaven, neither to hell. He simply says the rich man also died and was buried. Obviously, when he was buried, there was that lavish ceremony. And people saying, oh, he was such a good man, such a wonderful man. After a person dies, everybody's good. Is it not so? Very well. No one says that the dead man was a criminal. He was this and that. When everybody, a person dies, everybody wants to speak well about him as if this changed anything. But Jesus says, the rich man also died and was buried. And then there's a detail. In hell, and in hell, and being 
in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes. Which means when the rich man died, he went straight to hell. And there in hell, he lifted up his eyes, he saw. So the soul has eyes to see. The soul has eyes to see. To see. Because there in hell, the rich man saw. He lifted up his eyes and saw. And being in torments in hate, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. This is important for us to observe. Every word in the Bible is extremely important for us to meditate and think. Because Jesus is speaking about two people, two characters who formed part of history, who went through humanity. One was the rich man and the other was the poor, miserable, not just poor. Lazarus was not just poor, not just a bit poor. He was a hundred percent poor, miserable to the point of apart being poor and miserable, he had sores, which means he was sick, probably leprous. And the dogs came and licked his sores. So when Jesus speaks about death, death came to equalize the situation of both parties, the rich and the poor. The poor, the poor man, Lazarus, Jesus mentioned his name. He says that Lazarus, Jesus did not say the name of the rich man because it made no difference, but the poor, because he was a separated person from the rich, he had something extraordinary with himself. He had merits before God. He had faith in God. Therefore, Jesus mentions his name, Lazarus. When Lazarus died, his soul was taken by the angels to Abraham's bosom, specifically where Abraham was. But the rich man, of whom, of which Jesus does not mention his name when he died, he was just buried. Although a ceremony was probably done lavishly, it did not matter. Jesus did not even mention the name of the rich man because he no longer had any importance to him. He no longer mattered to the Lord Jesus. This is interesting, isn't it? The rich man no longer mattered because he died. And due to his incorrect life, because of his sins, he was taken directly to hell. And there in hell, he had the eyes to see Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. He had the eyes to see. And there's another detail. And being in torments, which means he was in hell, he lifted his eyes, but being in torments, so this is what happens when a person dies in his sins, in his sins and errors. It's not God's will, of course. He sent his son in order for all who believe in him, all who believe in him may be saved, may have salvation, may be like Lazarus after death. But not everyone accepts. Many do not really bother much. They don't believe and they even mock. They even make jokes. They even make jokes with the Lord Jesus himself. But in the moment of death, in the moment of decision, there will be no jokes. The truth is this. The rich man died and he went straight to hell. He went straight to hell and being 
in torment. Being in torment. I can imagine, I have an idea, a vague idea of what this hell is. But there are people who have a better idea of what hell is because they've lived in hell daily, day and night without stopping. Which means a person who is depressed, lives in fear, with pain in the soul, suffers in the soul, the soul, the pain of the soul of those who are depressed, according to the testimonies of whom we have heard. As the testimony of a psychologist who had this torment, she had this torment, her father committed suicide because of this torment, because it is an unbearable torment, so unbearable that a person ends up pulling the plug in his life. He prefers death over living with this torment. But now imagine the torment of hell. Imagine the torment. If here on earth there is torment, imagine the torment in hell. And this was the torment the rich man went. The rich man went to this place of which Jesus does not mention his name because he was not worthy. It was not worthy because he rejected the Abrahamic faith. Because he rejected the faith God offers to people. So that when he died, although in his glory, in his riches, in his greatness, when he died, he equalized the poor, miserable Lazarus, whom soon after death, he was taken to Abraham's bosom. So, my friends, we will continue the scripture. We will carry on with this tomorrow, speaking about the scripture and sharing other details about this true story, which is played through the the, the telenovela of Lazarus and the rich man, it's not a parable. It's not a fairy tale of which your granny or granddad shares. No, but it happened. Jesus said, and it happened. So it was. So, friends, think about the destiny of your soul. Evaluate well where your soul will go because you take good care of your body. We take good care of our body, do we not? So we take good care of it to, to cleanse the body. And when uh, the wrinkles appear, at times a person puts a bit of Botox and implants when they lose hair is it not so they lose weight they go to the gym to keep their body fit the body is taken care of like a prince like a king but the soul is treated as a beggar yes or no the soul is there inside of you and is taken care by you like a beggar because you do not care about it. But when depression comes, when problems come, when pains come, when challenges come, when defamation, persecutions, injustices come, your soul suffers. Your soul suffers, not your physical body. It is your soul. Your soul sees with your eyes, your soul hears with your ears, your soul speaks with your mouth. For example, I'm speaking to you. My soul is speaking through my mouth, which thinks as my thoughts, uses my thoughts, uses my ears, expresses with my body. It's my soul. So when I care for my soul, when I prioritize the care, the salvation of my soul, I am wise. I am wise. The Bible says that he who wins souls is wise. So you friends, you who are a vain person, very vain, extremely vain, 
you want to dress the best clothes, you want to live lavishly in this world, but you despise your soul. Tomorrow we will speak more about this. Tomorrow we will be talking more about this. But this word remains that there in hell the rich men who was living lavishly here in this world there he was in torments and there was no money to cover this to buy off a little bit of peace there was no money and the worst of all the rich man there in hell he saw he saw Lazarus the one whom he had seen his entire life there at his gate the gate of his mansion of whom he despised he saw that man who was miserable there in the same place where abraham was god's friend think well my friends think well where is your soul going to you who might be groaning with problems chronic chronic illnesses health problems, financial problems in your family. Your home is not a home. It's more like an hospice due to so many problems, so many fights, enmity, conflicts. Yes or no? Your house is a mess because of so much confusion. Why? Why is this? Because the soul, the souls which live under your roof are hungry. They want that which God has offered freely. But you do not bother with your soul. You only take care of your body, your beauty, which slowly but surely it deteriorates slowly but surely it deteriorates and this is the truth people deteriorate little by little every second every minute every day every week every month our strength deteriorates they get drained and one day everyone will go down to the grave Think about this, my friend. Think about this. Where will your soul go? Where will your soul go? Do you have the assurance of your salvation if you die now, this moment? Are you sure that you would go to Abraham's bosom or to hell? Where until today, the rich man is in torment. Answer this question to yourself and take a decision and make your choice.